Hey YouTube, this is John Hammond with some more Otter CTF and Memory Forensics with the Volatility Framework. So let's move on to the second challenge. This one's called General Info, 75 points, and it asks, let's start easy. What's the PC's name and the IP address? So we actually will use the flag format this time. <laughs> I was able to submit the, the previous one because I remembered that I needed to wrap it in CTF, so sorry about that. Anyway, let's move on to it. We have our... Uh, virtual memory already downloaded, we have volatility all set up, and we can just kind of use it with the profile equals, oh boy, I kind of forget what it is. It's the Win7 Service Pack 1 X64. Okay, cool. So now let's actually try and figure out what we can do to determine the PC or the computer's name and IP address. So let's take another look at the command reference, what we can really do. If we want to get the computer's name, right, um, we can look at processes, we can look at DLLs, we can look at open files or commands or enter, uh, environment variables, etc. Maybe NVARs will work for us? Display a processes NVARs plugin. Will this actually give us a computer computer name, maybe? It's worth checking out. It doesn't look like this does. Let's try it. NVARs. That's kind of the fun of volatility, right? Oh boy, okay, this is doing it for like every single... Like, geez, every single process either. But looks like it did even find one just in Windows PowerShell, right? Computer name, that's right there. That works just fine for us. Nice. <laughs> okay, there's our computer name. We can go ahead and copy that. Literally just checking out the environment variables for any of these possible programs or just entering it. We'll track down the computer name as an environment variable. Another option, and what I had kind of done originally, was I tried to determine where in registry is the uh, like computer name. So I actually just Googled that, like Windows Registry Computer Name, and then try to track it down. Um, wanted to see, okay, here is a reference in HK Local Machine System Control Set Current Computer Name. So we can copy that and we can try and view it, because thankfully Volatility offers a way to just print a key in the registry. So we can check out how that works. It's just using print key and then tack K which I'm assuming is going to only be looking in local machine. I don't know if it's able to view others, because it, it looks like that syntax or the front of it is just kind of cut off. So if I were to try that, we can use print key underscore, right? Lower capital K is the argument. And then let's remove system and HK local machine. Now, if I tried current control set, oh, print key, um, no underscore, my bad. It told me originally that the requested key cannot be found in the Hive search. So I thought, hmm, that's odd. Maybe it just can't see it in the current control set. So I actually tried another one. I tried control set 001, which is another one that is a default, or at least maybe not a default, but another option for where the current control set, not the current control set, but a control set could be. I mean, if, you, if you've seen Windows Registry, it's a mess, right? Like, there's plenty of places that stuff could be found, but control set 001 is a thing, and we can get the exact same result. Okay, computer name is going to equal the exact same string that we saw when we were checking out the environment variables. So now we've got two ways to skin a cat. Kind of cool to showcase that, but that's the flag for the computer name. Let's go ahead and submit that. Let's check it out. Let's see if we can do CTF paste that in. Please actually submit. All right, cool. Now let's get the IP address. This one is not too difficult. If you wanted to look at the command references, you can just go and like search for network things, or if you actually just checked out the very, very top of this, you can see that we have an option net scan. And that will kind of dump all of the connections that are made between this computer and others. Essentially, it's like a netstat command. Um, if we actually go ahead and try and run it on ours, you can see that most of these, like, actual references, or actually these connections that we're looking at, have a local IP address, right? 192.168 is something that will be local to us, or at least local to the local area network or the LAN that we're in and expected to be working with. That's a private IP space. So, I see a lot of repetition between 192.168.202.131, and I'm going to assume that that's us, considering it's calling out to other programs like BitTorrent, uh, etc., etc. Let's go ahead and try and submit that and see how it works. Looks like it's also getting, yeah, BitTorrent is reaching out to other things and listening on those ports, so we can assume that that is our computer. CTF. 
paste it in, wrap the flag syntax, hit the submit button, and that is also correct. So, awesome! That's how we can track down some more information with volatility. Awesome toolkit, awesome framework, uh, and totally a lot that you can, like, explore and find. Whenever you just get a memory dump, there is plenty that you can kind of carve through and dig out with these commands here. So I definitely recommend trying to explore them and just learn a little bit more about them to see what you can carve through. And hopefully I'll cover more of it as we go through more of these challenges. That is the end of the video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. But before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Can't thank you guys enough. One dollar a month or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. It's totally not necessary. I know it's not a whole lot, but maybe just a little feel-good feeling, warm fuzzies in your heart, good Samaritan, just helping out a dude put food on the table. And I am very, very grateful and, and thank you for that. Five dollars a month or more will give you early access to all the videos that I create and put on YouTube. Normally I like to record things in, in kind of in bulk and backlog of stuff that I've pre-recorded and like YouTube gradually release them like maybe every day or every other day. If you want the content right when it's ready, right when I have it recorded, uh, I'll throw it in that Google Drive folder and you can actually just go ahead and download it, watch it yourself and it's just good stuff, man. It, it, it's great. <laughs> Let me sell it to you. There's my pitch. <laughs> $5 a month or more and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for all your support and donations. So thank you so much. Uh, hey, please do join our Discord server, link in the description. It is a cool community full of CTO players, programmers, and hackers. We're almost at 2,000 people right now, so if you want to join the party, help out with that initiative, please do. Special shout out to Sinister Matrix, Cave Venom 1, and Void Update for stepping up to the plate to be the leaders and moderators there in my absence. So thank you guys so much. Hopefully I'll remember to keep <laughs> giving you a shout out at the end of every video. Fingers crossed. Alrighty. Talk soon. Love ya. Hope to see you in the next video.